We're still cruising along here at Maddie Ads, building businesses every day of the week, including the weekend. So yesterday on our website, we built out all of our footers. Then we installed Google Analytics 4, which is totally new in the digital marketing ecosystem. Um, in fact, later last night, I found some, some things that I hadn't known about with it. So it's gonna be a learning process even for me. That being said, setup was pretty straightforward. Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager set up within our new WordPress theme. So again, another shout out to Generate Press as a WordPress theme. It has been nothing but a pleasure to work with. It is it is quick. It's easy. I'm not a technical person, but you guys could buy a domain today for $8, maybe even cheaper. You could install Generate Press for free, and then you could get a $3 web hosting from Nixie Host, and you could have your own website this weekend. You could be cranking away on your own website. We also, we wrapped up yesterday's stream by picking our colors, but today, the focus of today's stream is going to be in distilling our future blog articles down to a formula. We need to know how long our headline should be, how big our image should be for the article. The article that I write today should look exactly like the article that I write six months from now. And so when we do edit, right, or when we do, when we add a new post, how can we already have all of this developed so that it is super smooth, super easy, rather than us having to go item one, review, uh, font is whatever, font equals Arial. And then we have to do write the review out, blah, 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 and then end font, right? So I don't wanna have to do this. What I want is to be able to just go into a Excel spreadsheet like this and maybe just copy everything and then, you know, paste it, something like that. So that is the goal. We got to think if we're going to turn that into a formula, into a factory line, what are the pieces that we need? So let's try and knock off these questions. And I think we'll be in a good spot. All right. The optimal length for an SEO headline is potentially 50 to 60 characters for what, what's called the title tag or the SEO headline. If you keep your titles under 60 characters, our research suggests that you can expect about 90% of your titles to display properly. We want to make sure that we don't go over 60 characters. So less than 60 characters. Check that one off. So the optimal length for a SEO description or meta description can be any length, but Google generally truncates snippets to 155 characters. It's best to keep meta descriptions long enough that they're sufficiently descriptive, so we recommend descriptions between 50 and 160 characters. We're going to stick to 150. The reason being is if you took two separate description lines of 160 characters, one of them might get truncated because the letters that you choose are important. M's take up more space than A's, so less than 155 characters. The reason why we're setting a, a minimum is because we don't wanna write it too short. We wanna take up as much real estate as we can here. Now we need to think about our posts from a mobile standpoint. Reason we came to Dodo Bird was to look at mobile. How does it look on mobile? Headline, description, boom, right into the picture. It makes people wanna scroll, right? It's like, oh, what's down here? What's down here? Oh, right into the review. Now let's look at GIF Lab. Not gonna lie, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Then they go into their headline. Then they have their date and author on the same line. That's fine. So do we. It's not as pretty, but so do we. Then they have their, their disclosure very upfront. They've definitely made a business decision that it makes more sense to have the disclosure really upfront in front of the user than to try and hide it. And then what do they do? I mean, this is like gray text, then it goes right into the reviews. So where does our advertiser, affiliate disclosure? We're going to try it above the image and description. How long is this, this headline? How long is this description? Because when we write an article or we tell somebody to write an article to pay them for it, we don't want them to write a thousand words if we're only going to use 40 of them. So let's set a, let's set a maximum headline length and a maximum description length for the product review itself. I would say the trend that we've seen in this industry and make sure you look at it for your own industry, the pages that rank really well, the actual review is only a sentence to two or three sentences. I think some of them just come straight from the Amazon product pages. So their, their headline length is 32 characters. So what do they got for a description? This is their description. It's about 300 characters. 
Let's check out our friends at Dodo Bird, see what they're doing. So let's try this. So their character length without number is 48, so they do longer. I think this is one of their longer ones here. So let's try it. So they do half the description size, but double the headline length. All right, we are gonna set maximums. So headline, let's do less than 42 characters. Description, about 350, how about that? So let's look at product sizes next. I'm wondering if we just do squares and call it a day. Theirs is 336, so theirs is not as wide. It is a square though. So I think if we do 375, that's fine. Our, that just takes us to the edge. They're, they're not going to the edge here. So we'll do 375 by 375 on mobile. And I don't know if this is actually like a thousand by a thousand. So we'll just have to play around with it. But we want, I, I think square. So desktop should be square. How do we pull in Amazon data programmatically into our article? So there are some Amazon plugins. Let's take a look. Anything that we do with Amazon, we need to make sure that we follow the rules. Otherwise, they can just ban you and you're done. You can only sign up for one Amazon account. Even if you have 500 websites, we don't want to screw around with that if we want to be an affiliate. All right, so generally most of these plugins make it easy to insert Amazon affiliate links on your WordPress site. Most of these plugins use the Amazon product advertising API, or in some cases, another method. So that's good. That means we can do it programmatically. And then some of these plugins, which we might need to do is they'll help us create comparison boxes or tables. This is technically a review box, headline, description, price. Picture, headline, description, price. Picture, headline, description, price. So we might have a, a plugin that can just help us create this. Um, oh, this is very nice as well. So part of the challenge with Amazon is if you hard code links, meaning if we built this review and we said, hey, if you want the survival hat, go to this link on Amazon. And it's more than likely going to be the dot com version of Amazon or the American version, which isn't great for somebody who's reading the article and they're in Germany and they actually need to go to the dot DE or the German subdomain. So it sounds like there can be some location changes that can happen in the link itself based on IP. Here are the premium affiliate WordPress plugins. AAWP, Amazon Affiliate WordPress plugin. It's one of the most established plugins for Amazon affiliates. Product boxes, right? So we probably need product boxes. And then data fields. So this lets you insert individual pieces of information via the API. For example, including the most recent price. By the way, this this is a traditional comparison page. A lot of affiliates use these for their reviews. And it also sounds like they have some display templates that we can use. Hey, we're using a template for our website. I'm fine doing that as well when it comes to our article. So now let's go look at what Reddit says about AAWP. Is AAWP worth it for affiliate marketing? Hey, I'm wondering whether it's best to go for AAWP plugin or if there's an alternative. AAWP is a plugin that pulls in straight from the API. One of these readers is saying, hey, it might not be best to build your whole business on Amazon. And we've seen other providers, by the way, Uncommon Goods, Etsy, who are gonna have their own affiliate kind of method. The AAWP wouldn't work for those. Okay, so some people are looking for better alternatives. Lasso, we have seen Lasso before, and I, I'm almost positive that Gift Lab uses Lasso. And let's let's prove that. Let's see. They do. I saw it in their about page. So they use, it says everything was built and monetized with Lasso. So what the heck is Lasso? So you can create beautiful link displays and monetize every opportunity. So you have custom link displays. You have an affiliate dashboard. Interesting. So normally you would think that you would need to look at like Google Analytics to see where all your clicks are coming from. But you could theoretically use a third party's dashboard since they're the ones that are inventorying all of your affiliate links. So they have product integration and they do update all of the product data every 24 hours in case you're using price, right? 
They do have click tracking and they sync to Google Analytics. This is pretty cool. And they have link alerts. Whoa. So we talked about that. What happens if one of your products goes clerk plunk and the business goes out of business and you're driving people to a product that no longer exists or is out of stock? It sounds like they are not just Amazon related. So that's a plus in case we want to use like uncommon goods. Looks like we're looking at 19 bucks a month. All right. So a little bit more pricey. All right. So Chasing Squid said they just installed Lasso on one of their sites. Seems like it's pretty good although perhaps a little slow and buggy mobile layout is great seeing as most of my traffic is mobile i'm confident this will help all right they say lasso is trusted and currently being used by some massive affiliate marketers more options for product designs and quite frankly the future releases of lasso are going to dwarf what aawp can look like all right so we might be future proofing ourselves by doing this they talk about affiliates big affiliates that are using it and we know gift lab is freaking huge like we just know it lasso also allows you to display it in a in a beautiful box whatever I mean, this is, you'll see that this box is a similar shape to what we want to create. For many of you that have a new site, how do you create new links? Easy. You simply click add new link, drop in any Amazon product, and Lasso does the rest. Allows you to create links from other affiliate programs. Okay. So that is, uh, that's interesting, right? What if we want to use uncommon goods or if we want to link to Etsy? They're not a part of Amazon, but we cer certainly want to use them. We're going to be live all weekend long, just to let you know. In case you get bored tomorrow morning and you're drinking your coffee and you want to see what Maddie Ads is doing, well, we'll probably be installing Lasso. So if you thought today was cool and you were thinking about how you could set that up for your own website, then you might want to check it out. Today, I think we we did what we needed to do. We came in here with a plan and we walked through all the criteria that we needed to figure out from headline length to description length to how do we get the product boxes to what products and plugins are out there that we can utilize how do we remove the manual aspects from a lot of the work that we need to do here and automate that tomorrow i want to give lasso a trial run uh, we still need to go through and apply for amazon affiliates i don't think we need amazon affiliate links at least to test out lasso i think we can just use some dummy links and i'll be seeing you tomorrow Bye-bye.